status is different. Okay, I, I don't care. Yeah, it says that's where it is. But I don't actually believe it. Bingo, looking good. See, yeah, uh, now it's just stuck on that screen. I don't know. Oh no, it's on the screen it needs to be on. And we'll see how long this lasts. Uh, uh, your eyes locked. The moment is electric. Time stands still. Colonel Sanders. If you love something, set it free. Together you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping spore full up. Then you see Ashley with a sinister look, look 
You know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. That's a sinister look. Sure, why not? And then filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the sport full of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid and beautiful face. Van Van, do something, do something. Scooping a fingerful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes with gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by the revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold on right there, studious. You do not waste food in a room cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Flings it onto your chest. And I has potatoes face. Oh, pop. Van Van rushes back over. Covered dish in his hand. Huh? Mashed potatoes with gravy? Up that. In just a few minutes, I've prepared a whole meal. Gaze upon my speciality. Braised tentacle of octopus in my silky salt water. Sucks. Plated on a battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. Alright. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You've ignored me too long, and it ends now. It is I who will have the first bite, and you will look on with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of a signature dish right off his plate. No, don't! Something about the dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed, and they turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Too late. It's been eaten. I uh, think I left something in the oven. I don't feel so good. Oh my god, I killed him. Everyone step back. Don't take another bite. When you look back at the plate, the rest of it's gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slipped into Pop's mouth. Pop winces in pain for a moment. He is almost immediately back to his oblivious self. Oopsie. Tastes like poison. What the fuck? The entire class has gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock is frozen the whole crowd. They are motionless as statues. So, uh, Ratatouille's dead. Path is apparently uh, still alive. Oh. As the class bell rings, disturbing the moment and snapping everyone back to the reality, it would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. Oh, so Pap gets to live. That's fantastic. Don't do it. It's alive. I'm not sure how the professor here is making enough money. I'm not sure the professor here is making enough money. Um, hello. I just turned into a ghost over here. So, seeing that you're shaken up by all the, by that really annoying student and all his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. That poor kid. I'm sorry, you. I'm. Sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. Ooh. What? Like, for real? Oh, come on. Sorry, ghost. And ghost, quote, of student. You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. Bro, we were there all day. It's nighttime. And this many fucking stars out? Jesus. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark. And more than a little spooky, thanks to that dead kid now. 
Colonel Sanders stands in the clouds. The neon glow speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know, they're not the great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. I tasted them. They reminded me of why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting chopped up. Cooking is obviously important to him in a way that I find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. C Colonel Sanders? Oh, yes. There's something I need to tell you. God damn it. There's an idiot over there. Hold on right there. There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, God. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef in the world. That's not what the line said, but still. And every day since, I've been working toward that dream. Day and night, never stopping, never resting. Also lifting a bunch of weights, like so many weights. Well, you should follow your dreams with all your hearts, and our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Ugh. Wait, no, I... you... Shut up! <laughs> I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. Oh, but you're not. You're just a weird dude. Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? You can't prove that. <laughs> but but we can. Hmm. I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance you hear a long sad sigh. Forget him. We're talking about me. Me, 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 me. I'm the hero. No, you are the villain. <laughs> the spork monster is here to fight a hero. <laughs> I think I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds. How dare you threaten me just as I'm looking down my gun and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid. Be very afraid of me. Because I am a monster. See? The creative looking spork monster. Almost like a sp spaghetti monster. Is he rhyming on purpose or is that just a coincidence? But before you can discuss syntax on the party, it's a turn-based fight sequence. What will you do? Attack? Exactly what you attack. Which attack will you use? Cook with love. Doesn't want that much. Just got me. That attack 